Last time we ended with me walking to sparring, and today we're going to watch how I did. I think about things as I walk, perhaps a bit too deeply. Sparring is a tension between what's necessary and what's possible, and for success you need to synthesise the two. Hi, I'm James. If this is the first of my videos you watch, you're probably thinking that's a bit strange, but if you want to watch a video with some savat, sparring, a few training tips and a bit of philosophy thrown in, you probably found it. I'm a former World Savat Champion and I'm uploading my training camp as a return to the ring after being injured for 12 months. That's enough walking philosophy for now, time to go in. As a coach fighter, I decide to spar with my students to impart my experience and to keep testing myself. Just as in this vlog I'm unfolding my methods, I hope that by treating them as equals, and many of them have skills I do not, I'm sharing participation in a process of improvement. I stick here to the plan you saw me create in the last video, left leg set up, right leg execute. I was pleased with my flow here, relentlessly attacking and defending in chains. I can't push Carl around, but I can stand off, use my footwork and sow confusion. Sorry Carl. My eyes are open, I'm seeing the possibilities. I mainly score kicks to legs, but I do put a few more head kicks in this round, just as one Savat champion messaged me to demand I do just this. Thanks Carl for your help allowing me to understand my technique better. Benjamin is newer to Savat, but is a really good athlete with some strong strikes. I retained my flow and I dictated the pace again. I'm being a bit lazy with how many punches I throw when this is a kicking sport, and we'll get to a reason for that later. My right leg operates again as the high scoring device, kind of as planned. Thank you Benjamin for testing my boxing and giving me such a good round. Mathieu is an angles guy and he's lighter than me, so I'm trying to match him for speed, but that's probably not a good idea and it's, and it's close. Again, I'm throwing punch setups when they would better be kicks, and I'm not using my lead leg control nearly well enough, even if we do have some interesting footwork battles, and I manage a few tasty spins. Thank you, Mathieu, for keeping me guessing and being such a fun sparring partner. I enjoyed that sparring as the flow felt good and that's a nice feeling to have but I'm still a bit concerned about my fitness uh, going into the ring after such a short training camp and I think I was disguising an issue with my right leg by throwing so many punches but we'll get to that later. I brought my rest day forwards to Friday doing nothing on the training plan today and got in some proper rest and relaxation. Then on Saturday trained these fighters in the park we were working trajectory, clean scoring kicks to legs, plus spin kick technique. There's a lot of green space in these videos as well, isn't there? Maybe I should rename it James's Outdoor Savat Adventures. Okay, time to get that fitness sorted out. I'm doing another nine rounds high intensity interval training. It's been a few days since the last, so it should be a perfect time to build on it. I started with another three rounds variable speed skipping, then some weeding. No kidding, my dad actually wrote to tell me to do this. Unusually enough, I'm doing one of my own workouts today. I logged into my own site and opened up the six round competitive workout. This is the one I use to get fit for my fights. It's six rounds, because I believe that to do three rounds of fighting competition, you need to be fit for twice that in hard training. So that's what we're gonna get up to. This is one of the most popular on my online academy and at the moment I've made it free to access. Link below if you've got 30 minutes and you want to try it yourself. By the miracle of split screen technology, you can watch me, 2023 James, versus 2021 James doing the same workout. First round is front side only, punctuated by explosive exercises. In this round something clicked and I'll tell you about it when we're finished. It's interesting to note what's similar after two years and what isn't. Perhaps a training tip is to record more of your own workouts and then wash them back later. I thought my pace was lagging a bit by the sixth round. Felt pretty difficult, but comparing it here doesn't look too bad. Okay, here's the breakthrough. Uh, Yuli 9084 if that is your real name, you've helped me to solve it. 
please keep using that stop kick, which is the chassis. I used to use my front leg chassis to control my fights. I've literally said that on this channel before. By the way, you should watch that video after you finish this one. But when my 2021 self told me to do this, chassis and jab, I couldn't, and it's not my ankle injury. Ever since 2021, when we unlocked down, I've been unable to fight properly. Every fight since has felt strained, like I'm holding a heavy weight and everything was difficult. I've had a few diagnoses. I was wondering if it was the psychology of not dealing with the stress after two years out. My physio thought it might be ITB syndrome. My doctor thought it might be sciatica. But then last week, I finally got a diagnosis, pinched nerve, in my right leg. What it has disabled me from doing is pivoting my support foot properly. Now, when I do a fuete, the circular momentum of the kick helps me to pivot the support leg. But with the linear motion chassis, I can't use any assisting momentum and I've got to pivot the foot underneath my body by myself or on one leg. And the pinched nerve is making that impossible to do quickly or painlessly. So it's not a general left leg issue, it's left leg chassis that I can't do, which is very good news for my opponent. And it's good news for me in a way, because that means I've got a proper diagnosis and I can start a treatment plan to cure it. It also means that my ankle injury isn't the limiting factor at the moment. But of course it's bad news if I've got a chronic injury that's still affecting how I do my sport. So I face the necessity of no longer being able to use my best weapon, but I can breathe in the pure oxygen of possibility and continue to create ways around it. New tactics, different strategies, change my game into something new to continue to enjoy doing my sport. But that is something for next week and I'll catch you then.